All right, what is up my homies and welcome today to Grey Gaming. Today on another episode of Commonwealth Contractor, we're here to talk about defenses. So we have this large open platform that I have to build over. I chose this site because it has the most open area for me to work with. So having a large concrete platform just sitting in the middle of the settlement is a little less of a problem here as it is at some of my other sites. So by now, hopefully you have all seen my Castle Gatehouse video, my first Commonwealth contractor build, and it's actually garnered quite a bit of interest. But a lot of people are starting to point out it's a very manual form of defense. It requires a lot of user intervention. So how do we create some sort of defensive structure that doesn't require you, the user, to actually do anything? So that's why I decided I wanted to take another stab at a different type of defensive structure that looks very similar and performs a very similar task, but doesn't require user intervention. So that's what we're gonna hope to look for today. So today I'm going to try something that once again, I've never attempted, and that is going to be a horseshoe man trap. So the idea is, is that it's a large crescent shaped object that's going to funnel enemy attackers through and is going to basically lure them into a killing field that automated turrets can take care of them for you. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so we already have a couple of floor pieces started. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're going to wanna select a gate. So if you know me and my movies by now, you know we're gonna wanna go with something out of the warehouse build set, and we're going to go with the heavy shop door. So we're just gonna snap our heavy shop door, and just like with my other defenses, you're gonna wanna make sure that your power connector is facing the inside of your defenses. So we're imagining that this direction is the opening our one entrance into our settlement, and then this direction would be our settlement itself. So once we have that taken care of and snapped the correct direction, now we can go ahead and add in our additional flooring. So there's our flooring that's going to make up the width of our wall. And we'll go ahead and just grab these and snap them in since we're done with them. So now we'll go ahead and add two more wall widths to this main entrance before we start our horseshoe ta taper off. So now that we have these, now let's go ahead and start our diagonal cuts. So we'll go one there and one there. Then we're going to go two wall or two more wall widths in a straight direction. And then we'll go ahead and add a couple more diagonal walls. So each of these walls is, I think, supposed to be 45 degrees. Then we'll do two more walls, one on each side. And then we're going to close off our horseshoe with a rounded arc. So we're actually going to curl back and come back the same direction that we came. But there is a bit of a problem, and that is that these diagonal walls will not snap to each other in a direct one-to-one -one snap. So we actually have to give it some sort of straight wall to snap. So just like with basic geometry, if you double your radius, you double your circumference. So we have to have a bit of a workaround. So here is where I'm actually going to start throwing in some roofs. And the reason I'm throwing in the roofs is so that I can snap in a couple more of these straight walls, which will give me my 45 degree angle for them to snap to, or 90 degree angle for their 45s to snap to. And now, I snap one wall to one side and one to this other corner. 
And so now they are the perfect length. We just aren't having to deal with the fact that their edges don't want to snap together in the proper width anymore. So that's how we're going to navigate each of these 45 degree bends where we have to have two of these diagonal pieces in length for our outer walls. So same over here. And actually for these walls, I'm going to do doors because I want my walls to actually double as a usable structure. I don't want them to just be wasted space. So I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of these floors because they are now unnecessary. And just keep going around. All right, so there we have our complete wall, but there's another small eight problem, and that is that these walls are not the perfect width to snap floors in, and nothing in the build set for the creation club, or not creation club, for the workshop, is actually designed to operate on a rhombus. Everything is a square. So we're going to have to get a bit creative here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just snap in one of these square roofs everywhere one will fit. So we'll throw in there. All right, so we've got all these squares that we have to work with. And we're also gonna go over to floors. And so one nice thing about the semi-circle floors is they're actually designed to either work as a floor or a roof. So we can actually snap these here, or if there's a roof on top, we can, actu we can actually snap them to flooring as well. So they're really nice for multi-purpose use case. And the same with our large concrete triangle piece as well. And the triangle piece is how we're going to navigate those rhombuses. So here, we have the ability to work on a square once. So if we go over to our triangle, the triangle is only designed to snap to the inside of a single piece here. So we can snap them here but it will not snap in the opposite direction. Our dimensions don't quite line up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna snap our triangles everywhere they will fit. All right, that one doesn't wanna work and I'm not gonna mess with it. And now to navigate, what we're going to do, I'll get rid of that stair. That'll probably allow that. Yep, that allowed it. So now we're going to set a floor on top of this roof. So we're actually going to slightly offset what we need to fill up that gap there. So we'll just grab a spare wall, snap it here. And then we're going to snap a standard concrete floor to it. So not the, right. And so now we're just going to use the basic triangle shape because these are a right triangle. They're not a perfect offset. And so here you do see there's one more slight gap we have to negotiate. So one more triangle in the opposite direction gives us that full bit. Now there is a small gap, but nothing that would be too major. So now we do that with each of our little rhombuses that we've created here.
And so that gives us our entire wall to work with. Now, just like I said, if I want to actually make this a usable structure that we can have people live in or use for storage, whatever, then we can just snap a couple wall pieces to the end. And now our horseshoe is a completely enclosed horseshoe with this nice rounded off edge. And the other side is a perfect mirror of it. And we've got our nice door. So just like with anything else, if I want to control access to this, then all I have to do is go over to my power objects, lay down a small generator, throw in a switch, and probably a power connector to navigate that corner a little better. And there we have our rolling door. So the idea here is that instead of having the two door man trap like we did at my castle gatehouse, you line the entire perimeter of this horseshoe with turrets. And you can also choose to line the outer perimeter with turrets as well. So the idea is, is that the only way for an attacker to get into your settlement, they have to come around the side where they're being fired on from an elevated position from automated turrets. And then they enter here and there's no cover. The only way to get to the door, they have to deal with turret fire from basically 360 degrees. Thanks for tuning into today's episode of Commonwealth Contractor. If you enjoyed this content, please consider leaving a like. And if you want to see new content every time we post a new video, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Until next time, this has been Gray. You've been watching Gray Gaming. Stay safe, and I hope to see you all here next time.